Uh, Congressman Mark Green, Republican of Tennessee, uh, sits on the House Homeland Security Committee, joins us via Skype. Uh, Congressman, always good to have you. What do you make of these restrictions right now and those traveling from Brazil? I, I would suspect that there more could follow. Where, where are we going with this, you think? Well, Neil, first, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, I think it's expected. I mean, you look at the counts that are coming to us from Brazil, 300 and plus thousand cases, 22,000 deaths. There's a university down there that predicts that it could be 12 times that. Their ability to track information is uh, different than our ability. I mean, if you do 12 times that or even 10 times that, that's 200,000 plus deaths. So it's appropriate and it's very consistent that the president would put this uh, restriction on. You know, we're watching their curve very closely, watching the other curves really all across the world. Um, and it's appropriate at this time to, to kind of hold off on, on non-U.S. Uh, citizen travel from Brazil. We already know that visits from uh, China and uh, points uh, Far East, of course, are, are already in danger of being, you know, cut down and, and, and very, very low going forward. Do you see anything to, to change that, or, or do you advocate that now, since it seems to be of the worst of it, we can entertain allowing more into this country? Or are things so bad now? Now is not the time to consider. I think we just have to take into consideration everyone's curve. Just like here in the United States, we're sort of treating states differently. New York uh, clearly is in a different place in terms of reopening and travel than Tennessee is. Uh, and I think we can do that in terms of the, the countries overseas and our allies and friends. We want to we want to open up as quickly as we can, but just it, it really depends on where they are in their curve. And if, in, if they're in an exponential growth phase like Brazil is, we probably need to stop travel. Do you wonder about this relationship we have with the Chinese? We're going to be getting into this a little more in the show. But the one issue that's come up is that the more we threaten to crack down on how the Chinese are cracking down on Hong Kong, um, the worse it's going to get between us, certainly financially. The Chinese have little We're reason to stick to a deal they promised to honor. Now, that could change. Um, but, but that it, it, it does get kind of out of control. Your thoughts? Well, we're already in a great power competition with China. And if you use the dime paradigm, diplomatic, informational, military, and economic, we've been in economic warfare almost with China for many years, and, and we didn't even know it. The case of Motorola is an excellent example, $17 billion company. They share their IP information with Huawei. They undercut them with government subsidies from China, and the company's basically scrapped. In 2011, for $900 million, 50,000 Americans lose their job, $2 or $3 billion off the GDP of the United States. That's what fuels our military. That's what allows us to provide national security. So, I mean, there's been a great power competition for a very long time. The, with Xi Jinping, it's like it's gone exponential. Um, and it's informational, cyber hacking, all this stuff. So the way they've handled COVID, only icing on the cake to a big problem. If China wants a great relationship with the United States, they've got to start acting like a friend. And, uh, you know, the, the way they handled COVID is just more concerning. And their response to our response to that is even worse. All right. We'll watch it closely, Congressman. Thank you.